All right, 709 here at News Talk 96.5. KPL, look, it's like anyone wants to read the tea leaves to yes. see exactly what's happening, especially with the economy. Where is it going? What are the trends? And the good part is that there are people out there, I would argue the man we have on the phone does it among the best, um, <laughs> who don't just read tea leaves, who look at graphs, who look at trends, who look yes. at other areas. Dr. Lauren Scott joins us on the phone ahead of a big event coming up on September 26th here in Lafayette. We'll talk about that coming up. But Dr. Scott, good morning, first of all. How are you? It's been a whole year. Good morning. It'd be ugly to complain. It's been, uh, <laughs> it has been an interesting time period, hasn't it? <laughs> it, is, it has been really interesting. And I, I think a lot of people look at different. I was actually talking to someone um, who had to relocate over to Houston for his job and then couldn't sell his house here. So he's leasing a house to someone here living there, and we talked over the weekend, and he was like, Rob, what are you hearing? Do you think I'm going to be able to sell this house? Do you, where is it going? And I have, I have just decided to leave those sorts of questions to the experts like you because it's just different. I mean, it's, it's totally, um, you know, it's not objective for me because I live in it, but I love right. that it's, you know, mm-hmm. someone who can look in from the outside. So um, kind of give us a preview of what you're going to be talking about at the big event on September 26th. Well, it has been a uh, it has been a tough time period for Lafayette. It always is. I mean, Lafayette. If you look at a picture of Lafayette's economy, it's got a lot of what I call bees in it. Uh, you know, sometimes deep dives, but you, you, and you've been in you've been in one of the deep dives for now four years. Mm. You've lost about twenty one thousand, almost twenty two thousand jobs since uh, the last the last growth period you had was January fifteen. So this has been this has been uglier than a train wreck. Yeah, but again, if you if you, I've been watching the the Lafayette economy for, for almost four decades now, and there's always the other side of the beat, and you guys always start coming up. And I think I think you're about to bottom out. You're going to see some numbers to come out for July that shows that you're still you're still losing jobs. The, the rate of the rate of decline has slowed markedly uh, this year, and I think there there are a number of indications out there that the oil patch is starting to come back. And when the oil patch comes back, I think that's going to be good for you folks. Yeah, I think so too. I wonder about the difference, obviously, with our oil field services industry, fabrication, those sorts of things uh, down the Highway 90 corridor that we have here. How will Mm -hmm. that adjust? Because all we're hearing is that there are some land-based drilling operations either in East Texas, West Texas, or even northern Louisiana, Arkansas kind of area that they say they can't hire enough people. So will it shift there? Will we, you know, have companies based here that do work there? How does that usually work in in economies? Well, right now, the hottest place probably in the world in terms of the oil and gas industry is in what is called the Permian Basin Play in West Texas and uh, southeastern New Mexico. I mean, it's like a gold mining town during the gold rush days. Uh, they uh, one of the tougher things they have, are having to find is people who can drive trucks, and they're they're actually going to female ex felons who are single <laughs> to drive trucks, and they're paying them in excess of a hundred thousand dollars a year to drive trucks. Let's just give you one little anecdotal piece of evidence. Yeah. What we need, what we need for Lafayette and really for Homa area is we need the Gulf of Mexico to come back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that because that's that's your bread and butter. It's your bread and butter, not mm-hmm. only for your service firms, but also for your fabricators who build yeah. the platforms and the subsea systems for out there. And there's starting to be some indicators that uh, that it is they're starting to see some movement. Uh, the, the key for them is they have experienced a long period now, uh, or they experienced a long period of low oil prices. Now oil prices are starting to come back, but oil, but oil prices need to not only come back as they have. But the the people who operate out there have to believe they're going to stay there, and uh, that they, if anything, they'll drift up some more. But the key thing is for them not to drop again. And uh, I think there's there's signs out there that that's the kind of environment we're going to have for the next two years. And if that's the case, that's exactly what Lafayette needs to have a turnaround. You're right. You're right. Do. You know, there's been a lot made of the lawsuits that some parishes have filed <clears throat> against oil companies. Does that make a difference? Does that play into all of this? It certainly plays into drilling on the South Land part. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, if you look at the rig count in the South, what is called the South Land, and I think that's basically below I-10 out to the coast, 
uh, you'll find the red count has dropped very significantly since the lawsuit started. And I think it's, I think it's very unfortunate to me. I don't know if somebody's watched this industry for a long time. Uh, I, 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 re- I really wish they wouldn't do that. I think it's the case of the dog biting the hand that's fed it yeah. uh, over the years. So I'm really, uh, I'm really sorry that that's happened. Uh, you know, one of the unfortunate things is Louisiana ranks 51st in the United States in terms of legal environment, according to Forbes magazine. And that's not something that's helpful to our economic growth. And it's particularly uh, that's the case in land-based drilling, I think, in South Louisiana. There's, wow. there's been a big effort, um, as you know, here in our area to diversify the economy. When, you know, people mm-hmm. talk about what happened in the 80s, and I hear, you know, Bernie and I have talked about it and, uh, and other folks, um, Carol Ross, to talking about even this intersection right out by us, the Congress and Bertrand intersection, where it might be the middle of the day when the big bust happened in the 80s and there wasn't a car on the road. Well, at last mm-hmm. check, Ambassador Caffrey is just as congested as it is, has always mm-hmm. been. So, I mean, even with the loss of 20,000 plus jobs, have people just turn to doing other things? Are they working out of town and coming back in? Is there any data on that that kind of show how it works? Oh, well, actually, uh, you, 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 your city, Lafayette, has done a great job of diversifying your economy around since the 1980s. I mean, you think about huge employers that you have there. You have Stellar, mm-hmm. which is the largest uh, jewelry settings manufacturer in the world. You now have LHC, which is the second largest uh, uh, home health provider in the United States. You have Schumacher Partners, uh, Clinical Partners, which is also a very large firm. And, of course, uh, Richard Zudlog's uh, Acadian Ambulance, which is now, I think, about 20 states. Uh, you have four or five, and I'm leaving one out that's uh, escaping me for a moment, but you're, you have four or five very substantial uh, firms there that, that that hang in there and keep their employment levels, in some cases over a thousand plus, even though there is a bust in the oil patch. Now you look just south of you to the home area. Home area really doesn't have that kind of diversification, and as a result, whereas you folks fell about ten percent during this terrible time period, mm-hmm. uh, home fell sixteen. So you've had a little bit of a buttress there that's helped you to avoid. Uh, you know, basically a total collapse like you experienced back in the 1980s. Wow. Do you think the job force is here tomorrow if, if I don't know, there's magically a light switch, then everything, you know, all these places come back online, back down through that Highway 90 corridor we've been talking about, and they say, all right, it's, we're open for business again. Is the job force still here to, to fill those jobs? It's going to be it's going to be tough. But there's no question about that. But, uh, it, again, the history of Lafayette, is that there's, there's always there's always the right side of the V. You always have a right side of the V, as I put it. You always you know go down, but then you come up, uh, as it turns out, and you typically come up pretty you know pretty smartly. So we'll see. There again, there's some things happening. If you if you look at the lease sales in the Gulf of Mexico, they're up uh, compared to what they were earlier in the year. You look at things like uh, traffic on LA one, which is yeah. the only one expressway which goes into Port Fouchon. All those things are, are starting to show signs of improvement. So uh, that's going to have a lot to do with what we have to say at the at the breakfast. Yes. Of the so right. I hope people come out to to join us. All right, so that's happening um, over at the Double Tree, September 26th. You can get tickets online at oneacadiana.org. We will mm-hmm. post a link to it along with this interview on our website. People should go. You really should go. It's a, always a phenomenal event. Dr. Scott. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun there, and um, uh, I try to mix in a little bit of humor with our uh, with our forecast. So uh, hopefully well, we've needed it. come out and the, have a good time. The last few years, we've needed all the humor you could bring, especially talking about economic <laughs> no outlook. All right, uh, Dr. Lorenz Scott, thank you uh, so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. Enjoyed it. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right, so again, that event is September 26th. It's a breakfast. Uh, mm-hmm. Every year I go to that thing. I yep. sit I sit back so I can be working on a news story, mm-hmm. you know, kind of as we go through things. And I think that's why I think it's so people important are for people early. to go. <laughs> these people wake up early. What? Like us. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's great. So we'll post um, the information. You can go to oneacadiana.org. You buy the tickets there. Tickets are 50 bucks. Um, it's a breakfast. Um, it's weird. It's kind of like a breakfast mixer. I mean, you see yeah. everyone you ever needed to know um, at this thing. But Dr. Lauren Scott, obviously, with with so much experience and such an interesting outlook from someone who's not in it. You know, it's exactly. so funny because, um, and I'm pretty sure he lives in Baton Rouge, right? I'm pretty yes. sure. Yeah. So 
whenever you're buying and selling property or you're working here every day, sometimes you get mixed up in, oh, well, that house sold fast, so this mm-hmm. one should. Or that house has been on the market for two years. Oh, the economy's in the toilet. You know, when you take someone out who looks at it, you know, as a whole, I think it's, it's really good. Not to say we need an outsider to tell us how great we are, but uh, but Dr. Lauren Scott's been doing it for uh, years and years. So Much respect. All right, 719 here at Acadiana's Morning News. Stay with us. There's more after this. The National Anthem by Jordan Sparks. You know, we're back in football season. Back talking about the National Anthem. You just got to love it, right? Yes. Just got to love the National Anthem. Good morning. Thanks for waking up with us.